Good day. Today is the 14th of December, which makes it 18th century dress-up day. Uh, this is sponsored by my friend Emma Elizabeth for a 18th century sewing Facebook group, and this is the presentation for December. Once again, uh, December is being a winter month. I'm going to cover some items that you might want to wear if you're going to any kind of the events over the 12 nights of Christmas or some other holiday celebration. Um, things that you might want to wear to a potluck or to a dessert tea that might be handled in your local area. Normally we have a dessert tea here in Washington State at the George Washington Inn. Uh, it's a wonderful time of year um, with beautiful views and this year because of COVID we can't have such tea so instead we're doing a video to show what you might be able to wear to that kind of an event. Now I'm going to start with uh, what I have on my head. This is a cap that is a historic pattern by Larkin and Smith. It's the Phyllis Wheatley cap. It's dated to about 1773 and is patterned off the actual person's headwear, Phyllis Wheatley, who was a very a famous and well-known poet. Now, the cap that I made is of white handkerchief linen. The trim on the edges is an or, um, a gauze ribbon, three inches wide, uh, with a little red velvet to accent along the middle line of the pleats. I also find that depending on how much hair you have and how long it is and how much you can pile it up, to get the actual poof that would have been historically correct, sometimes I add a little sheep's wool stuffing to my caps. Um, just to poof out the back a bit, my hair is wound up on the top. Um, but the back needs a little fullness to keep the, the ears from sticking out too far. This way, you bring them back just a little in the back. Now, um, they, I also add a comb at the top of the front to secure it in the center of the top of my head so that it doesn't either fall forward or backwards. Clips on the side and a comb in the back can also help if you're in a particularly windy environment or having to go inside in a, in a, a stormy day. So, um, after the cap, I come down to the kerchief. This is a neckerchief that is also made out of a cotton organdy. It's a book muslin, and it is characteristic of the period for ruffles and various other items where you need this and would like the stiffness uh, to hold the shape of something. I've trimmed it in just a little lace, and it is, uh, comes to a V in the middle of my back. This is much smaller kerchief than I normally wear. I normally wear a great big one across in front and completely underneath the jacket. This one is just rolled and tucked right down the front. Uh, they are harder to manage. They do come unpinned when you do that. That's why I prefer the bigger ones that stay completely tucked inside your jacket. So the jacket itself, this jacket is made out of silk. Um, it's a silk, a plaid silk taffety, taffeta from Sarah Gonzalez shop on Etsy ensembles of the past. I got a yard and three quarters and the jacket pattern is a combination of a fig leaf jacket and of a JP Ryan jacket. I took elements of each jacket that I liked and combined them together made new um, tissue paper drafting pattern and cut this jacket. It, it's lined with um, William Booth Draper number 106 Osnabrück linen, which is my favorite lining. I use it for almost everything. And this, it has this particular pattern. I use the one view with the stomacher from both J.P. Ryan and uh, the fig leaf pattern offer you several different treatments across the front. Sometimes it's just tied or pinned together in the front. Other times it has a stomacher. I liked the stripes in this plaid, so I wanted to offset them by adding a stomacher. Uh, I'm going to add one more thing to this jacket, which I haven't had time to finish, and that would be that I am going to make a, a ruched, a wide ruched cuff that will go on the outside at the bottom, and we all gather together to give a little bit more decoration. I have just enough fabric left uh, for two long pieces like this, which will then be gathered together. I got a total of a yard and three quarters to make this jacket, and which left me enough fabric so when I messed up the matching of the plaid on one of the front sections, I had enough to cut that extra piece. Um, one thing that I have noticed that when cutting plaids, 
if they're silk, you really need to pin them together at all the where they line up because they even in the cutting can shift just uh, a, an eighth of an inch and then your plaids don't line up across the center front or across the center back. So um, where to put where to put the plaids, where to line them up, where to put the main bodies of the stripes is all a concern that makes for interesting sewing. Uh, I hand sew everything, so it's much easier when you hand sew to make sure that everything is lining up because nothing happens too fast and you can often peek inside even when you're sewing the, sewing the sleeve together to make sure that the actual fabric pattern is lining up. Uh, so going on to the next layer, well, the next layer I'm wearing is a petticoat that is silk taffeta. This fabric is from the Silk Baron. It is called Bordeaux. And I always have my petticoats are 120 inches around, cut in half, they tie in the front, they tie in the back with the slits and on the side so I can get into my pockets. I basically make the same petticoat all the time. It has a five inch panel in the front, which sometimes I find is useful to pin to the front of my, um, my uh, pockets and stays just to make sure that it doesn't shift one way or the other. Now, under the silk petticoat, because it's winter, and silk isn't particularly warm in a drafty and cold environment, I have an under petticoat that is made out of dark olive worsted wool from William Booth Draper. And it is absolutely fabulous. It's soft. It's easy to work with. It's an absolute treasure of a fabric. Um, and so in the same way, I get two yards most always for a petticoat. Because this is wool, um, I got away with a yard and a half. I didn't want it to be too heavy. Sometimes a wool petticoat um, gets really heavy around the waistband. So the yard and a half seemed to be just right for me to make a full enough petticoat to, uh, for winter. Now, that petticoat would also do well outdoors. So if I were having to go out caroling, say after a potluck or a tea, I might take off the silk petticoat and just go with the wool petticoat underneath and then my normal underlayers, which would be an underlayer linen petticoat and a shift. And for the shoes in the stockings department, um, one of the issues with winter is that wool socks are pretty much imperative. Uh, and these shoes are a sturdy shoe, um, good for walking outside, going caroling. Uh, heels may look dressy, but they might not be so secure on uneven streets or in slush and snow. Um, the shoes I have on here are from Daniel Boone. Uh, he's a purveyor of period correct wear. Uh, they are all leather and delicate enough to be a nice lady's shoe for regular attire, not dressy. The buckles are from Turncoat Traders, and they just have a little bit of an adornment and a flourish that make them a, look, a little more feminine than uh, the men's standard straight brass buckle. So those are the shoes. They have a leather, a small leather heel, so nothing that you would find um, uncomfortable walking in for any great distance. So those are the shoes. So th that's the general pattern of what I have. To go outside, I might also add um, a long cloak. This is a, a long dark green wool Melton cloak with a hood, so it would cover my cap and keep the rain off. Um, it is uh, very heavy and it just ties with a bow, uh, long wool ties in the front. The other option is uh, a short cloak. This one is extra heavy wool, almost waterproof. In the period time it would have been called bear cloth. It is woven, then it is fulled, and then it is brushed so that the rain slides off the brush just like uh, the, the brushing, just like it would off the coat of an animal. Now, it is a short cloak, so it has a little trim. It has a black velvet and a braid trim around the bottom and around the collar. Underneath, I might wear a wool, a wool a kerchief of some sort, a wrap of some sort, tucked in, or this is a period correct piece if it's not raining. Um, I had, I've shown one of these before. This is from Burnley and Trowbridge. It is a copy of a scarf out of the DAR Museum for the late 1700s. 
and this scarf uh, can make an outfit quite nicely. Um, if you don't have even anything else very decorative, this really adds a lot to, to the outfit. So those are my um, items for the holiday season and for various 12th, 12th night celebrations. So I thank you for watching and stay tuned. We will be doing some shooting this coming weekend up at the George Washington Inn and Estate where we will be filming um, making a hand spun linen shirt uh, for a man and possibly doing a couple other reenactors who are uh, some part of the Daughters of Liberty and maybe a couple men included. So thank you very much for watching.